Sheila had never been a superstitious woman. She went to church on Sundays and scolded her squabbling children out of their morning beds with all the gusto that her forty-something self could manage. Never superstitious, despite living a five minutes walk from the most densely wooded hills in the Pacific Northwest. She knew the stories, but modern knowledge contradicted them. Or at least it had. Standing now in the fading light of a stained glass sunset, Sheila questioned those laws of science and reason, those laws that said she should be safe to walk the short distance between the homestead and the chicken coo that had gone far too silent only moments ago. Standing ten paces from a door that hung limply on partially buckled hinges, Sheila was faced with an almost physical wall of raw scent. Whatever it was made a skunk appealing, somewhere like a mix between spoiled milk and raw fish. Nothing in the world smelled like that. And Sheila knew this. She stepped back, eyes born into the darkness beyond that swaying door. Darkness that almost seemed solid. Darkness that turned into a pair of eyes that met Sheila's. Eyes that looked down from above and beyond the chicken coop, seven foot tall door frame. When her scream reached it, the thing bolted. Leaving the coup so fast that the screaming woman lost sight of it. It ran to the west. Breaking for the tree line with so much speed that by the time Sheila turned... All she could make out was a silhouette, the details of its form disguised in the rays of the setting sun. No man moved that fast, and no bear moved on two legs. Sheila was not a superstitious woman, but God would damn her as a lie if she wasn't sure as hell of what she had seen. Welcome to the Snickersnack Podcast. My name is Caleb. I'm joined by my co-host, Cal. That is me. That is him. That is how he sounds, yes. And this is how I sound. This is our first episode of Snickersnack, our first kind of venture into this uh, whole new ordeal of uh, folklore and creatures and things of that nature. Into the unknown. Into the unknown. Once more into the fray. Uh, so basically what this whole little deal is, is that we come or we find a bunch of lore about creatures from folklore and stuff like that. We read it, we figure it out, and then we talk about it and then we start getting to like the speculative stuff, right? Cause you know, you know, we, there's a lot of podcasts out there right now that are like, they talk about creatures and folklore and it's super cool, right? But they never go into like the... Like the speculative, right? Mm. Or how to deal with these damn things, you know, getting on your lawn and all that, right? Like, you know, it's great if you have a problem, a giant on your lawn or whatnot, but how are you going to deal with it, right? Very important. So, giant repellent? Giant repellent. At all? Maybe? Always. Is that like the bat repellent that, that uh, Batman has? In the, the Shark doctor? repellent, even. Oh, yeah. Shark, shark repellent. <laughs> But uh, today we're going to start off with a, um, a classic, right? Get us all, you know, just a little taste, a little appetizer, get our feet wet with uh, Bigfoot. Everyone likes Bigfoot. The Squatch. The Squatch. The one. The one. The lad. Everyone knows him. Everyone knows him. So, and, you know, as a couple of, you know, Northwest boys, it's kind of a, I feel like we're uh, qualified on the matter. We know our way around the Squatch. We, we do appreciate the Squatch. So... All right. You just so happened to do a little bit of research about the Squatch. A wee bit. I decided to abstain a little bit, aside from what I already know. And uh, why don't you uh, hit us off, Cal? Our our boy, the, the Squatch himself. Uh, I mean, what does everyone know about the Squatch? We know that he's tall. We mm-hmm. know that he's covered in hair. Mm-hmm. And he has at least one above average foot. Wow. That... You know, the, at least one above average foot. Mm. Yeah, no, he's like the perfect man, basically. Yeah. 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 Oh, wow. that That's a body type I aspire for, at least. <laughs> Hairy, tall. I mean, you know a thing or two about that, being 6'9 and all that. That right? is indeed the canon height. That's, yeah. <laughs> the Cal canon height, 6'9. Mm-hmm. Yeah, God. What, what, are we, what do we know about Squatch, really? We know that it is... Uh, cultures all over the world have the traditional legends of men who come from the mountains, uncomfortably tall, sometimes covered in hair, usually 
maybe quite fierce, sometimes even cannibalistic. Um, very common in Europe. In Europe, and then obviously we have our Native American legends here in North America, particularly around the Northwest. Yeah, I know there's um, what is it the so you got the Australian Yowie. Mm -hmm. There's one which is very similar to Bigfoot. You know, you got Yetis. Mm -hmm. um, there's Yeren. Yeren. I don't know where. I know his name. Yeren, huh? Yeah, and then. We, you know, in the U.S., we've got skunk ape, swamp ape, Sasquatch. Right. People right. treat Sasquatch and Bigfoot like they're two different things, which, eh, not not so much. I, I was, you know, I never really put a distinction between the two, Sasquatch mm. and Bigfoot. Yeah. I always just figured they were the same thing. Yeah, Bigfoot's like the Americanized title. Which, right. Uh, and Sasquatch, I know, comes from, if I can look at my incredibly well-placed-together notes, comes from the... Sasket name it was given by the I'm gonna butcher this one, but the I believe you know you. I believe in you. You know oh here here it goes the hmm <laughs> I'm not a linguist style stylus stylus I'm you know you take a stab at it let's see where where is it it's, it's uh, this one. Oh, wow. Yeah. I can see where your problem is. Yeah. That's a... Uh... Stisales. Stisales, maybe. St maybe st even them. Stisales. It didn't come with a pronunciation yeah, guide. But... Sesquets Ses means, means the hairy men. Ah, I see. Short and to the point. I do like that in a name. You know, you find that names across the board are pretty dang literal. Just bar none, mm. right? You know, there's always like those fantasy names where it's like, oh yes, the the crossing of the of the the the, the black heart or something like that, and it's it's never the case, right? Grimborn Shadow Fang, the dark of the dark hearted world of the dread maws. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, you end up with Bigfoot, Harryman, the Loch Ness monster. Why is it called the Loch Ness monster? Because it's the monster of Loch Ness. Yeah. Old Nessie. It's Nessie. You know, names are great when they're just very specific. <laughs> Short and sweet. Short and sweet. Mm -hmm. All right. So, anything else we got lore-wise? I mean, lore-wise, uh, we know that Sasquatch has been, at least in the U.S., a traditional legend or maybe something more than that for maybe even a thousand years old. There is the... Uh, the Tool, the Thule River Indian Reservation, the petroglyphs of the Sasquatch family, presumed painted by the uh, the Yokuts tribe, and that one's got uh, it's a pretty it's an iconic piece of imagery. I'm not sure what kind of editing we're working on here, but we may overlay a mysterious image here. Oh, okay. To display. Mm, schnazzy. Getting, may, may have. So getting a little editing in here. I'm yeah. here for it. I mean, hopefully. We'll see. We'll see. But yeah, it's a it's a pretty iconic one. It displays a family or a troop, if you want to get primate. Cool. Uh, a crew of Bigfoots. I mean, I don't know about you, but I like getting a little primate. Mm, mm. It just reminds me of my childhood. Yeah. Yeah. The primal nature of man. Yeah, I, I see it. <laughs> see it. Them, them Sasquatch, yeah, they, uh, there's a lot you can go into. I think one of the, the troubling pieces of looking into these cryptids and these, uh, folklore creatures is trying to separate the myth from the fact, because really, you never know, primates are secretive, secretive little guys. It can be hard to track them down, but then again, there are the people who walk around in wooden shoes and leave... So much hoaxy, false evidence behind. Yeah, you know... That's it, a pain. It, it really... On one hand, like, just put a poster on my wall that says, I want to believe, mm -hmm. right? But on the other hand, like, this isn't a case of, like, we haven't discovered the, you know, the... What was it, like, 80% of the ocean? Something like that, yeah. Yeah. 85, 80% of the ocean we have no idea about. Yeah, because, like... 80% of the ocean, like, that's that's crazy, right? I mean, a lot of that's probably just open ocean. What's in it? Yeah. But this is, like, our domain, mm. forests and stuff. And, yeah, I mean, a lot of, especially in the Northwest, if you're not from here, there's a lot of forest. Um, 
and it's not a whole lot of people live out there but on the most part you feel like you would you would have a lot more concrete evidence in that regard yeah it's definitely nowhere close to as dense as places like the congo where they only relatively recently discovered things like the uh, the bonobos or the billy ape or whichever yeah and i mean if we did have something as large as like I don't know, a couple foot taller, like gorillas, essentially, mm. if we're going with the primate theory. Um, like that, I feel like we would discover something at that point, you know? Yeah. Like, I mean, I don't, I don't know any other places that have gorillas that we haven't discovered already. Then again, that, that kind of I mean, serves the point. If you, if you think about it, the, uh, what is it? The Western lowland gorillas were only discovered in, I'm bullshitting here, but like 1900, really ish, yeah, huh. very recently. If wow. you if you consider, and then up to 20 years after that, people were saying, "Oh, you can't bring women on your gorilla expeditions because they'll get raped." <laughs> and now we know that gorilla are peaceful and for the most for the most part pretty chill. I personally, I wouldn't pick a fight with one, but you know, <laughs> I don't I don't think I would either. Yeah, no, uh. Uh, I'm I'm good. I'm good about that. There was that. Oh, what's her name? That that one scientist. Jane Goodall. Jane Goodall. Jane Goodall. Yeah, she was she was awesome. Mm-hmm. She was super cool. Um, all right. So, what about you? Got anything on like modern, like modern interactions modern aside Bigfoot. from not not finding book Bigfoot? Oh, that... We don't talk about finding Bigfoot. <laughs> I feel like when you're you name your show after one premise, yeah, and then you go whatever it was fourteen seasons and mm-hmm. still no Bigfoot. See, that's another thing that I'm like, ah, uh, man, Bigfoot's probably not real. But again, I'm like, or Bigfoot just pays attention to a bunch of incompetent nonces walking around with cameras in the woods and says, you know, fuck that, bud, I'm I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's fair. Mm-hmm. I mean, I watched that show once, maybe twice, and it was I I couldn't stop laughing because mm. like I was watching, I'm like these guys are larping. They are LARPing out Truly. in the woods. I remember doing this when I was a kid. It looks fun as hell. It really does. I'm here for it. Right? You know, you get you get too busy sniffing your own farts and the the whole like, oh, it's out here. You can hear it. And then like a car drives by and it's like, oh, the car scared it off. <laughs> uh, we, we, we were so close. It's mm-hmm. like, I don't I don't know about that, Chief. Have you, uh, are you okay? Is everything okay at home? It's like. <laughs> yeah. But no, I mean there are there's iffy iffy local recent accounts. I say recent because not for I feel like the dawn of the camera and people starting to carry smartphones has kind of taken away a little bit of the the what, what am I of the world the the validity of yeah. like word word to word accounts because if you if you think about um, if you're familiar with the the Ape Canyon incident in uh kind of saint helens territory are we talking about the original video i'm original video yeah the oh no 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 not the not the patterson oh not the patterson okay yeah, yeah no but um it's uh fred beck and a, another couple of guys i know bob gimlin did a great video on it hmm. but uh he's one of the he's my personal favorite like bigfoot content creator he does yeah. he does good stuff but yeah fred beck and a couple of other mountain men were out and allegedly one of them like had to one of them got pounced on or something and had to thwack thwack a sasquatch with the butt of his gun and then they were they were trapped in a cabin by like a whole troop of them and they were shrieking and oh you know what i have heard of this pounding on the doors and apparently one got its arm through the wall isn't there like a bunch of recordings of like I the audio recordings or something along those lines? I don't think so. I don't think so because it was re- what 1924. Mm. 1924. I, re- I remember hearing about maybe it was Joe Rogan podcast. Oh, or something, Joe Rogan. Of like it was like audio recordings of of like Bigfoot or Sasquatch. Mm. Uh, you get you get weird at audio recordings living out in the woods. I, I will say that much. I yeah no the the deep woods is its own animal, right? You may not be you know like ah stuff like that doesn't exist. That's not real. But once you go like 
living out in the deep woods, then you start experiencing things that are like, oh, no, no, maybe, maybe they're on something. I'm going to I'm gonna hold on to this gun a little closer. Yeah. My uh, my mantra is that don't, don't try to disprove anything from the warm safety of your home that you wouldn't <laughs> say staring at it in the face. Like, yeah, I mean, I'm all well and good. No Bigfoot's here. And then you, you are challenged to walk two miles through densely wooded fucking pine in the Pacific Northwest <laughs> at two in the morning. Two in the morning. And by you, yourself. you hear yeah. something thumping on a tree and you're like, motherfucker, I'm out of here. I, I don't need that in my life. No, <laughs> thank you. It's like, it's probably just a bobcat. Do bobcats thump trees? Occasionally. The big ones do. The big ones do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, no, so let's, do we want to move into some of our more more speculative or are we gonna talk about the patterson because uh, i know you like the patterson caleb i do like the patterson i'm a big fan of the patterson now video. see the patterson gimlin film you'll what is it 1967 guy it's, it's the classic scene. it's the classic yeah. <laughs> now there is a lot of arguments arguments to be made that yeah it's a just a it's just a dude in a monkey suit but let me ask you this how many monkey suits have you seen with a pair of just, pardon my French, that gorilla is stacked. If that, <laughs> so Damn, boy, he's thick! The, the <laughs> alleged individual in the Patterson film is a female Bigfoot. Oh. And boy, oh boy, it's a... Uh, Really? Wait, it's, so that's supposed to be if a it's female? A, if it's a suit, they really, they went all out. Where's the massive gorilla titties? Oh, have you... Caleb. The the gritties, if you will. The gritties. I... Where do we hit the gritty right mm, now? That's vile, and I'm going to throw up... I uh, yeah, no, that... Uh, maybe maybe we'll throw in a frame or two of the Patterson when we're on the topic of editing things in, but... Of gorilla titties. Of or the... the... Yeah? Yeah. But no, it's... um. What is it? It's like 40 seconds, maybe not even that, of a... Sasquatch going about its life. Yeah. And, you know, it does have a certain quality to it that other, like, films don't really have. There, it's not, There's not as much jank going on, and it's pretty steady. Yeah. And I know there are... There's what people call the seam in the costume, where people say, oh, I can see the where it splits in the thing, and how you get in and out of the suit. And yeah, maybe, but... You know, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that because, like, mm. there's plenty of animals out there that have fur that just sticks sticks out in yeah. different ways. Can't or... rule out things like a scar either. I don't know. I I try to see. I try to play both sides a little yeah. bit because it's the only way. I like I like me some great apes, but right. I do feel like maybe people are looking in the wrong direction when it comes to Bigfoot. What do you mean? Which, well, here I go. I. I'm Caleb, you know me. I'm something of a creature designer. I'm something of, of a, course. an enjoyer of speculative evolution. So, if I may, there are no great apes in America. Right. Save humans. That we know of. That we know of. That we know of. Um, but something that did live alongside humans in North America that people kind of overlook when it comes to the Sasquatch theory is Neanderthals. Huh. Because if you think about it, there are people who you look at him and you're like, yeah, he's not all there. <laughs> Neanderthal DNA? I I see. I was in the Coast Guard mm. and I, I knew a guy, our, our cook on the boat. We called him Sasquatch because he, he you could tell he had some like Neanderthal He had that DNA. heavy, heavy brow. Heavy brow. He, he, he walked with that gait. Mm. But you know what? All of that just still strikes me like that gait that he had. He was he was kind of a tall, lanky guy, hmm. but he had that Sasquatch gait, which is which is kind of nutty, honestly. Yeah, uh, I think about it. I'm like I, I think back to like the the Patterson video, Patterson, yeah, yeah, yeah Patterson, film. Patterson video, and it. I'm like, oh, you know that that is basically the same gait. Yeah, it looks a, it looks a wee bit familiar. I mean, there's a reason why we called him Sasquatch, but. Um, yeah, no. I, are you are you implying that we are 
compatible with Sasquatch? I biologically, I would not. <laughs> I would not go there. I don't. I've read the tabloids too, oh, no. and let me tell you, <laughs> no, they get a... funky out there. Boy. That's one that dog training. I forget his name. I feel bad. What the? the mm, mm. But no, it'll it'll come back to me. Don't you? Okay, worry. okay. It'll come back to me. But uh, yeah, no. I mean, I feel like when a species such as Neanderthals are faced with the oppressive, domineering force that is Homo sapiens, and they have no option to to propagate, yeah, or compete. I mean, we are kind of like the cryptid of the animal world. Truly, we truly. are. We are the fae. Oh, we bet we 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 can either you know like animals come up to humans like for help mm-hmm. if they're familiar with us because we'll help them, but at the same time, it's like it's a risk every time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, yeah, we got a, got a box stuck on my head or something go up to the humans they'll they'll take it off my friends are caught in a mud pit yeah help me out but we also you know add stipulations to deals you know or like a like a a, find a pigeon with like a broken wing or something and take it in it's like ah now it lives in our house and we feed it oats Mm. frozen peas and and it's like a weird month of semi-alien abduction while healing, and then you're let go. It's like, did that really just happen? That did just happen. That pigeon had an encounter with a god, as far as it's concerned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or just, you know, some animal minding its own business, and then uh, we appear and strap things to their back or their neck. I think there was a... It was those those tiny little desert cats that I was showing you. Mm, the little black-footed cat. Yeah, the little 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 guys. And they put a... They were, like, really elusive. The cat cam. Yeah, you talking about the cat cam? Well, no, they put a they put a collar on them, mm. like a GPS locator collar, so that they could find it. It was either that or like a it's either the cats or it was the um like a like a, a snow leopard, snow lynx or something mm. like that. Mm. It's like yeah, the most elusive, you know, animal in the world bar Sasquatch, but we we threw a a GPS locator on it, and it's like, well, now I just have to live with that now, you know? Hmm. We are, we are, we are the Fae. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. Yeah. But, yeah, no, that, what uh, do you think about, like, Neanderthal, like, Neanderthal? Neanderthals, yeah. Hmm. So that's, I don't know, I feel like when faced with, because Neanderthals were attempting to do the same thing that humans were doing at the time because humans did, I believe my human history is icky, but arise from Neanderthals or we shared a common ancestor. That's Something the along idea those is lines. That we share a common ancestor, yeah. yeah. And then indirect competition, humans schooled them and they went extinct. Right. Or did they? Because maybe when faced with a an oppressive rival that's doing the same thing you're doing. You change your tune a little bit. You gotta evolve. You gotta you gotta evolve. So maybe they started going to more secluded places where humans hadn't really infiltrated. I know that we were a very at least in North America, we were a very plains dwelling race. Right. So maybe the deep woods were the answer. Hmm. As as a armchair speculative biologist, that would be my claim for Sasquatch because you've got the opposable thumbs, you've got upright posture, and you've also got generations of living in the woods. Right. Potentially getting really good at staying in there. I mean, it makes like, you know, going off of a line of gorillas or mm-hmm. stuff like that or, you know, uh, Gigantopithecus, which is the the typical go-to, I, I think. I hate the Gigantopithecus theory. Yeah. I mean, no no res- no disrespect. I love Gigantopithecus. It's a crazy Example of megafauna. It's really just a big orangutan, isn't it? Truly. That's yeah. structurally wise, that's what we're looking at. I never watched Jungle Book, so you know. Uh, I, well we don't we don't talk about I the meant Disney the new one, not the old in one. This, yeah. In this house. Yeah. <laughs> but uh no it's um G- Gigantopithecus was a very uh it was in Asia for the most part. Or right. I believe central central South Asia. Again, mammals not my strong suit. Call me when reptiles get involved, but <laughs> You know, I, I carnivores. like carnivores, yeah. <laughs> but no, I 
I mean, the size kind of fits, but the gait doesn't, and the bones, the like the arms relative to legs don't really fit. Right, and it, I feel like it would be, like, if you watch, you know, the Patterson video, mm-hmm. and from what people describe of just big hairy men, they tend to just, they walk like humans do. For the most part. There are or less. a good number of accounts that put them on all fours, at least some of the time, hmm. which is... Uh, I know there's there's a few that say ah, I thought it was a bear and then it stood up on hind legs and I saw its face. Well, I mean, we used to squat down a lot more than we do nowadays. It's true. It's I mean, it's kind of yeah. classic behavior. I mean, you know, sitting uh, people people nowadays sit with uh, you know in chairs or on their ass, but mm-hmm. back in the day. And some people still do. They you pop just a squat. Pop a squat, you right? Pop a squat. So if if a, if a Sasquatch was popping a squat and was watching a guy, you know, close down to the ground while not being, you know, so low that you can't just get up and move, mm-hmm. then, you know, it, it would it would make sense. Like, oh yeah, I thought it was a bear, and then it stood up. It was, yeah. It was some guy. His name's Chuck. You know, it's Chuck Squatch. Chuck Squatch. Chuck Squatch. Yeah, that's, that's one thing that I do find interesting, because another thing that you see in a lot of a lot of Sasquatch media, or a lot of people who talk about it, they say, ah, yeah, the brown hair, or like the reddish brown, kind of orangutan-flavored hair. You know what's interesting about the red? Hmm. There's so many stories, right? And kind of delving a little splitting off from Sasquatch or like-minded creatures, um, so many stories about... Red-headed giants, mm. like Etons, Ir- Ireland, Ireland. Yeah, there's there's the um, there's the stories of well, there's red-headed giants in North America too. Right? Really? Yeah. yeah. Um, that the the natives dealt with. Mm. Um, they were like uh, more in like cannibal uh, mythos type deal. Right. Um, there's also the ones that were said um, to be in the Middle East while. Uh, the U.S. were there hmm. not too long ago, right? There's there's stories about that, um, but redheads and giants kind of go hand in hand. Which uh, for any you redheads out there, hey, you've got a maybe that's where the lineage comes from. <laughs> maybe <laughs> that'd be kind of cool. I'm gonna and, stop. I'm gonna stop making fun of genders for that. One. <laughs> it's not that you don't have souls. It's that you're part Neanderthal. <laughs> Which would, uh, hey, that would also explain why, you know, redheads are kind of disappearing a little bit, mm. you know? It's Getting competed. Well, no, it's because, like, they're not, they're not in the gene pool anymore, mm. right? So they're slowly disappearing because they're not getting that influence by the, the, the Neanderlithic, Neanderlithic? I don't Neander, so. Neanderthal, uh, you know, genes or whatnot. Hmm. Yeah, this is some serious speculative. Yeah, that's Emphasis a, on speculative. That's a deep, deep that's theory. <laughs> See, you went and made the connection to red hair, and I was about to shit all over it. Because think about a really well-camouflaged mammal that lives in forested environments, specifically trees. You mean like a tiger? Uh, well, the tiger is my next point. Actually, <laughs> but keep keep going with me. What's a slow upside down mammal? Upside down. Uh, Up, a sloth? Sloth. There you go. Now, sloths are remarkable for a few reasons, but one of them is that they grow a coat of algae. Yeah, that's because they don't go anywhere. They don't go anywhere, but imagine a pseudo-human intelligence. Actually, isn't the skunk ape, uh, like, described as being slightly green or green um yeah but that's because he's coming out of a swamp and i suspect he's got like swamp goo in his hair a little bit can you i don't think he's got can you describe the biological uh components of swamp goo (laughs) swamp goo i mean you've got your algae you've got okay frog scum yeah that's it's it's all it's all (laughs) i was trying to rib on you for swamp goo but no that's fair (laughs) yes picture picture like a swamp with a little bit of a gator in it you know that that gator's got a layer of green cake on his back Mm, the green Mm. cake but yeah no uh you do bring up something interesting with tigers though and that is tigers are a color that their prey cannot see huh. at all. So tigers exist in an invisibility coat. You mean like a like a safety orange the hunters wear for deer? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly the same principle. So an orange coat 
while not the most camouflaged against human photography, would definitely work for a predatory animal, which I don't know how he's getting that big if he's out there eating only greens. Right. You know, maybe because gorillas are vegetarian. Well, but... Eh, yeah. I mean, yeah, they're, they're, yeah, they are, but they also engage and well just just I remember mean, everything just remember, is a nothing is a full herbivore you hear that vegans nothing's a full herbivore not even the vegans well, well the vegans try but the vegans that's, try but that's that's a rant for another day <laughs> right now we're talking about a potential neanderthal sasquatch neanderthal god that this is a deep cut like like theory mm. that i See, wasn't i wasn't expecting honestly no like Neanderthal Sasquatch. I mean, I'm still chewing on that bone. You, it kind of makes sense, and it scares me. I I do it my also, best. It would also explain like why there's so many like ideas of Sasquatch, not just Sasquatch, but again like the Yowie from Australia, yeah. right? Where it's basically the same thing, or Yetis, right? What if all these were just not necessarily offshoots, but some adaptations subspecies of... or primitive humans who neanderthal I, I think you do need and again we're not we're not crazy conspiracy theorists we're skeptics at heart okay we're not we're not saying this is how it is no 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 this is all speculative if it right? was if this it is was how it would be we are in we, theory. we want to believe people but we're also like well you know there's no video out there but well no good one no well aside from you know from what, 70 years ago now? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. But, but, hear me out. It's really freaking cool. I I would love for there to be big apes. Well, <laughs> that raises the question. Because we here know a little bit about chimps. Yeah. I would not sit down at a table with a chimpanzee. Personally, <laughs> chimpanzees... Uh, what is, what is some, one of those new-aged saying... They give me the ick. <laughs> Chimpanzees are very rude, to put it nicely. Yeah, they will um, rip your nuts off. If you've got extremities, maybe don't get so attached to them, are because you, they won't be attached to you. Do your best Voldemort impression. Yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, those chimps. So, do we want there to be potentially seven to eight foot tall primate adjacent Probably pretty cunning beings, living very in intelligent, like subhuman. But we don't know that. Well, I mean, if my... they did, then they would be rocking around with. They might have foregone higher intelligence for less Here's... for better physical attributes. Yeah. Here's something that I've got. A. <laughs> no, I retract the A. I retract the A. Okay. I, I think I have one point. I think I have one point. Fine, then. Keep your secrets. If something <laughs> evolves to be secluded and is evolving from a species that Neanderthals definitely weren't human intelligence, but they were civilized to an extent, or at least they had a social structure that was, I think, coherent. Again, I'm reaching. They can come up with things. Probably. Probably. I mean, if anything that can imagine, I guess, a spear. Do we know if Neanderthals were wielding fire? I don't know. Nor I, do I. I have no idea. That's a question. Personally. That's a question for the viewers, but I guess. They I'm I'm I think they did. I mean they from what I understand, they wore clothes. But then again, I might just be getting uh, you know, mixed up with uh What's that movie? The Croods. The Croods. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So we have we have accurate prehistory, and then we have the Croods. We have the Croods. Yeah. Right. Nicholas Cage screaming is I I you know I, I like you it. know I like Nicholas Cage screaming. Okay. Nicholas, Nicholas Cage is cool. Put Nicholas Cage in every movie. I would like a live action The Croods. Because <laughs> I want to see Nicolas Cage as a caveman throwing rocks, throwing like, rocks obscenely far. Yeah. Yeah. And babies. Right. Where where was I? Where was I going? A, a species that evolves to be secluded will absolutely do everything in its power to avoid attention, which means probably no fire, which means probably 
staying away from areas outside of the woods or right. outside of similarly difficult terrain. So you have your high mountains or you have your swamps or you have your wastes in Australia. Well, think about this, right? Like imagine, so, okay. Stop thinking of humans as, you know, your, your, um, Starbucks drinking, you know, your tall, skinny, soy, caramel, macchiato, soy, toffee, nut, extra foam, fat, free, double cream, double sleep, no cup drinking people. Yeah. That's <laughs> and, a, mm-hmm. no, you, go, you keep going. You keep and, going. And think of them as more like the Terminator. Yeah. Right. So Neanderthals go, ah, I'm going to make a, a fire. And then as soon as that fire starts getting used, humans see it, go to it. Send hunting parties. Kill it. And then they're like, okay, we're not making fires anymore. Or, mm-hmm. like, they forget. Or they those people that do make the fires end up dead over time. Natural and then selection. Natural selection. Over. And then you end up with, like, people that don't make fires. And since it is speculated that um, human intelligence comes from the fact that we cook food um, or cooked food... Um, and that, that released, what, nutrients or something along those gives, lines. Gives the brain potential to grow bigger, given that it's provided better nutrients at right. an earlier age, yada, yada. Yada, yada. yada better yada. nutrition equals bigger brains. Mm-hmm. That uh, Better ingredients, Papa John's. Um, <laughs> um, but if they don't have access to that, would the brain regress? Maybe. Also, although okay, it ahead. doesn't even need to be necessarily a lack of cooked food, because sometimes a species is only as intelligent as it needs to be, given That's its niche. True. Yeah. So if a species that was intelligent is moving into a niche that doesn't require that intelligence, mm-hmm. it doesn't need it. I mean, I've seen people like that at the local Walmart. Yeah. Yeah. Walmart (laughs) is essentially just a zoo of people who... It is the tide pools. It It is... It is... You get to see all manners of different creatures Mm -hmm. there. (laughs) So you say tide pool, I say cesspool. That's that's one and the same. One and the same. Then again, I, I I would never, I would never dare to insult your precious ocean. Yeah, my I I do quite like the ocean. The, the ocean's got some fun stuff in it. Yeah. Um, what was I thinking? What so, were you thinking? I was I was I was thinking. I was doing a big thunk. Okay. Also, okay. <clears throat> so you've played spore before. I have indeed. As people that love animal or creatures and animals and things, you have to play spore. Okay. So there's a, a an idea, a little a little a little thing in spore, right? A little concept. It was the uh, complexity meter. Complexity meter. I hated that shit. Right. Yeah, no, it, it sucked when you wanted to create a dragon, but at the same time you could never put that many I plates always, on it. I always ended up with too many pieces. It yeah. was so sad. And it's like, well, you know, you can't make something cool cuz it, it it's gonna ruin your computer mm-hmm. performance. But what if, what if that? I mean, I feel like for a creature to get higher in one category, it has to get lower in another category. And, and this is completely one hundred percent speculative. As someone that is not a biologist in any way, right? I, this is just me <clears throat> shitting mm. just everywhere. That's but, all. The, that's all we can do. Right. At the end of the day. Look, I'm not a scientist. I'm a podcaster. Come on. Um, <laughs> if they got better, like, and here, here's my theory, right, or my my thoughts, right? Let's hear it. That okay, so gorilla, real strong, really strong, mm-hmm. right? Big, strong, small pee pee, but big and strong can theoretically mm-hmm. bench four thousand pounds, right? Not not as smart as not nowhere near as smart as humans. <clears throat> humans really smart, big heads, massive pee pee. Nowhere near as strong as a gorilla. Potential will almost get there. Well, well if, if we do have the the locked potential mm-hmm. and stuff like that, you know, you, was it we only use about thirty percent of our mass so, or our, something our, like that. Our thirty percent of our potential, potential. Muscle, muscular energy, which can be. Unlocked through adrenaline, mostly and, adrenaline and stuff like that. But because if you used hundred percent of your muscles, it would rip you apart. Your and... bones are gone. Yeah, yeah. However, 
it's while that is a thing we're still locked behind you know we're no we're still not as strong as a gorilla yeah right do gorillas have adrenal glands i believe so does I that think most mean, primates primates do because i would imagine that almost all like well, you know animals there would lock them out of their maximum usage of of muscles except for in dire circumstances just because it would rip your body apart yeah and while we can like go squat in a hospital for a while while that happens in our wonderful houses and and you know air conditioning uh animals don't get to do that so it's almost more important for them to be able to do it than us right Mm. so does that mean that a gorilla's higher percentile of strength is higher than what we've seen that i do not know um i am big interested in animals but i don't have any kind of degree yeah so that i do not know i would say that it does sound logical for that to be true i can't back it up with a study yeah but we are here sitting in chairs talking about bigfoot right you you can only get so accurate only so accurate Yeah, we're talking about Bigfoot. I don't, I don't know if science is really the word for it, mm. uh, <laughs> but it's it's the it's the practice of cryptozoology, and we're yeah. we're here for it. Where we are now, are you ready to get your cryptozoologist license? Are you ready for you get, you get the license? You get the we get to join the club. Uh, you know, you go for meetings every every like every other month, and mm. you get bagels. They got bagels there. It's gonna be great. Um. <laughs> um I'm going to pull it back. Okay. You ready for this? Chimps. Chimps. Unpleasant. Yes. We're back rude. to this. Rude. They are rude and they are primates. And, you know, I see some I see some humans on the occasion who are rude. rude and act like chimps. How dare they? How is a theoretical maybe 400 pound, maybe a little bit more or less, give or take, I'm bad at weight... Um, potentially six, seven, eight feet tall, former Neanderthal, stealthy forest ape, going to react if it sees you in the forest. Because a lot of people, like, swear by saying that Bigfoot is a peaceful creature. Um, and then you have your Ape Canyon incidents Mm. where one of them gets ticked off and people claim to have been trapped in their houses or trapped in a building with a whole troop of really angry primates outside. Right. Being all grungy. I mean, that makes sense. I mean, you see it a lot in folklore. Um, That's my little cup of tea. I like folklore. Mm. He's the biologist. I'm the folklorist. Um, Again, no degrees. But... No degrees. No degrees. We are professional idiots. We are. Free balling. Um... (laughs) But you see it a lot in folklore that we'll take, um, we'll have a, a story of a creature, and um, over time it will become kind of like a protector of nature, things like that. Um, Bigfoot's one of them. I can't remember the other ones, which is really bothering me. Um, I know. Uh, <sighs> uh, <laughs> you, you go. You I'm go. trying to remember because. It wasn't that long ago that I was looking into this stuff, but so it's like a forest guardian. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot guardian. of forest guardians out there that that were originally really like a dangerous cryptid mm. folklore creature. Thunderbirds. 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 I don't know. Well, Thunderbird. I don't, I, I have no idea because they're a lot older than like their history of creation is a lot more a lot older than uh, what. I have access to, right. um, and you know, when you don't have written records of things, it's kind of hard to find the creation of the idea of a thunderbird. But I always figured that was just its own thing. Mm. You know, like they've always kind of been guardian esque in a way. Either way, uh, regardless, you can look, you can find the stuff on your own. Dang it! Uh, a lot of the times, creatures will turn into guardians of nature mm. ideas, which I think Bigfoot did as well because i don't think the original ideas of bigfoot are that oh he's peaceful and maybe like you know sure it could be peaceful 
I mean, in, in a in a sense, but a if lot you of look animals at, can be. Yeah, if you look at great apes like a gorilla or an orangutan, they are definitely quite peaceful. And so, personally, if we're going to roll with the potential Neanderthal Bigfoot, mm-hmm. it can't go seeking conflict because it has a evolutionary had an evolutionary pressure placed upon it to, at all cost, avoid humans. Right, Which right. is why you never see them. Yeah. So if faced with a human, what do they do? Dip, duck, dive. Dip, duck, dive. Dodge. Mostly they run away, we think. Yeah. What or try to scare us out of their territory. Scare out of... Wall, what, what do they call it? Uh... Tree, tree banging, tree or? thumping, bumping, Don't, tree thumping, they, not they, tree banging. That sounds like something completely that's, different. Yeah, that's it's a what, hippie pastime, not yeah. not hmm. something. That's something else. Suspect getting a little too into nature. Um, yeah, but uh, tree thumping, trying to scare off people while still maintaining stealth. I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, what I'm what I'm trying to what I'm baiting the hook with here. Mm-hmm. Are missing four one one. Oh yeah, that's that, that. People going missing in the deep woods is such a staple through definitely the Pacific Northwest, but also like if you look at Appalachia. Yeah, God. I mean, that's definitely more your area than mine. The Appalachians. The Appalachians. I do like the Appalachians. Mm-hmm. A lot of folklore there. Oh, we got that good stuff. Wrong accent, but. Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, missing four one one is a really interesting case of stuff that are a lot of it is explainable, right? There have been cases that have been uh, figured out or speculated to be in a certain way, but a lot of them are also just we don't know, we have no idea. Yeah, you know. So yeah, what if by encroaching on the territory? Of something like our our cousins, I guess that um, cousin Squatchy, cousin cousin Squatchy, <laughs> that they uh, they get a little aggressive. They may, they may, and you know there are in Native American myth like some of the races of giants that were cannibals and that would prey on men who right. either saw them or tried to drive them off or ward them off. And those guys are pretty much, and I might be speaking out of my ass here a little bit, but those guys are pretty much always depicted as being big mm. for the most part. Oh, so you're, you're talking like, like big, big. Well, no, no, not big, big. I'm talking just big girl. Yeah, can, cannibal giants. Yeah, they're, cannibal they're giants. always they're always a lot bigger than like us. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I guess that just adds to the fear of them because why would we be scared of something smaller than us? I mean, um, if there's a whole lot of them. Bigfoot actually is just a race of hobbits. <laughs> just, ha, it's that old old, old uh, question, how many uh, fourth graders could you take in a fight? Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know, I mean, probably three or four, five or six, I, ten or twelve. I, I respect your uh, humble estimates. It really depends on... The how hard it's all about how hard you're willing to hit them i don't want <laughs> I to don't, punch a fourth grade okay in the face. how many if if hobbits were the strength of fourth graders hmm. how many hobbits could you fight do they have swords no at least four nice it's a good weight advantage i mean you've got long ass legs i have reach but not much weight You'd have to kind of reach really low down there to actually punch people in the head. Yeah, yeah. That's a that's a. We're way off track. We we've got <laughs> we've we've lost the lead okay. somewhere. Okay, all right. Rounding it back here's up. A, here's a lead. Here's a lead. Okay, okay. So if my specialty is making monsters, okay, because I like my creature design, Caleb. Yes. You kill monsters. That is that is my that is my little thing. Yeah. So. Given a situation where you are faced with a raging, out-to-get-you, seven-foot-tall, red-brown, forest-bound, big old boy, Mm -hmm. what's your go-to? Have you ever considered 
The Mossberg 700. Okay. (laughs) This is something I figured I'd run into. Guns are too easy. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) Guns are too easy because, you know, humans have advanced to a point where... Nothing really. Combat against the the beasties of nature is really just a point and click simulator. (laughs) Look, we have arguments constantly. Not so much anymore, right? Where he's like, oh, I want to make dragons. And it's like, but I want them to be completely bulletproof. And I'm like, do you know what that implies? <laughs> it's physics. Are how not my big? Friend. How big of bullets are you considering here? Because we can punch through tanks, and those uh, yeah, no. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, gun kind of kind of real strong. Mm. So no, no firearms. No firearms. Too easy. Dealing with gorilla. Gorilla Grod over there. Uh, gorilla Grod. <laughs> dealing dealing with the Squatch. Dealing with a, a potentially real mad Squatch. Um, well. How about we do with prep time and without prep time? Oh, geez. Without prep time, it's like, uh, turn around, kiss your ass, and say goodbye type deal. Mm. You just run up on it. It's like you don't have a weapon on you. I mean, I'm picturing... That's how 411 happens. Imagine throwing a spear at something that is twice your weight and has two feet of altitude on you. And if... The thing is, is that we are the best throwers in nature. It's true. Humans, that's one of our greatest strengths is that humans are really good at throwing things but imagine neanderthals can also throw things imagine how hard with that length of arm that leverage just you never see him he just beams a rock at your head and you're gone that is a gun (laughs) with accuracy too Mm. like if they are they were similar to us and from what i understand they use they use tools. They use spears. Rocks and spears. Rocks I, and spears. I think we are both Again, really bullshitting the we, Neanderthals. I, but... I, I'm going to be honest. I don't know a whole lot about Neanderthals. We're just... Again, we're here for the sauce. Mm-hmm. It's a good sauce. But the idea that... Yeah, it... um, It can throw things really good. You know, that might be half the reason why they're so mysterious is because, you know, some guy goes missing in the woods. What happened to him? He got beamed in the side of the head with a rock. Yeah. And, you know, I know I said I wouldn't bring up Finding Bigfoot. And we shouldn't. But in a book I was given as a child. Okay. In a Finding Bigfoot book, I might add. That's where this is coming from. There is an account of a woman who is driving, I wish I knew her name, driving down the road, a road. Mm-hmm. A country road, even a rural road, Take and home. had a chunk of a like a fallen tree or a log or like a big a real big thing thrown through her windshield. Mm. Passenger side, she was fine. She kept driving. What the fuck? <laughs> so, oh god, this is this is worse than I if thought. If <laughs> that account is to be believed, then yeah, they do throw things, and I guess. Like chimps, there might be an element of unpredictability to that. Uh, yeah, you know, you ate you ate uh, Jubo's birthday cake, and now he's gonna tear your ears off. He's not a happy camper. God, I hate the fact that that is not just you. That's just an actual event that happened. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> don't don't look that up. Well, that that event was. I could get into it. I'm not going to. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so it's like it's like a because apes will throw things. Yeah, we throw things, but apes don't throw them with a whole lot of accuracy. Mm. We do, and so if a creature which devolved or evolved in a different way from you know Neanderthal, I mean, I would say evolved because some aspects are being lost, and that that intelligence. Theoretically, maybe they're still really smart and just skittish as all hell. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, could go either way. As as a human, I think we prize intelligence over a lot of things. Absolutely. So maybe that's just me being um, the the the, the, the human human hum- centrist. Oh, my species is stronger than yours. Well, you know me. I'm 100% human centrist. That's yeah. why I'm 100% the 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 Imperium of Man and mm. Warhammer. But. Mm. <laughs> God Emperor. God Emperor of Mankind. Um 
the uh but so i i you know the idea of prizing intelligence over everything else i mean we look at that we look for that in our dogs we look for that like like oh elephants super smart and we talk about how intelligent these creatures are so clearly we 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 prize that over other things so that's Mm kind of where i came from that but if uh, nature doesn't care Nature right. doesn't care. It's just it's, about doing what you do real good. Yeah, yeah, and uh, live long enough to have kids. You don't. It's true, and you don't. You don't have to be super intelligent to be elusive. Yeah. I mean, look at uh, the coelacanth. Yeah. While we're on the topic of four, you know that's cryptids. that's fair. Like we thought that thing was gone. Although that is something that is elusive, not really intentionally, as it much as it's just elusive by proxy, because it's, humans it's, don't poke around deep sea caves all that much. And it's ocean, and yeah. ocean means that it's hard to find. It's hard to find because guess default. what? You know, for the record, not a whole lot of humans in the ocean. No, almost none. I would argue. Yeah. Compared to the rest of the population. Yeah. Although we, we like our coastal environments. We're getting sidetracked again. So Yeah, we'll go to mer- we'll, we'll we'll discuss mermaids at a later date. Oh boy. Mermaids. <laughs> um but yeah. So he's gonna throw rocks at you. Mm-hmm. So maybe the instinct is let's get close. Don't get close because Do he's a big boy. Do not. And I'm confident that a gorilla, hell, maybe even a chimp. A chimp would need leverage, but could rip you literally limb from limb. Oh, absolutely. A chimp this would probably is, have to pin one shoulder this down. This is Chewbacca. Yeah. This is basically Chewbacca. This oh, is it's a Wookiee. It's getting in a fight with a Wookiee. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, probably smells as good, too. Um, probably. That's something that's consistent with uh, sightings, allegedly, is the terrible smell. Terrible. Yeah. 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 But, um, ooh, let's, let's do this. So, so maybe... I mean, I'm thinking if I can't see the thing about humans, right? Yeah. And their ability to beat every other animal is that it's because we're smart, mm. right? And we make things because we're tool users. And so devoid of the best tool that we have, right? Go, it might be a cop out, but, uh, you know, start like we got bows and things of that nature. Burn the forest down. Fire is always good. Fire is always a fantastic tool. Mm-hmm. Um, lighting fires, uh, especially if they they tend to shy away from shy fire, away from which fire. I imagine they would, because fire means humans are about. And yeah, humans are like an evolutionary top predator that they would probably fear. Yeah, I would think. We're we're such a top predator that we've removed ourselves from the food pier or not the food mirror food chain the food, food chain yeah the food pyramid I'm I don't know you but I'm a grain boy myself I'm glad that <laughs> human isn't on the food pyramid that's just me personally just, how, how much how much human is in a in a in a normal day to day diet <laughs> I hope not much hopefully none is hopefully that, none for Bigfoot either is that next to proteins or I mean it would be part of proteins I mean they they this pro disproved the food pyramid not mm. too long ago so thankfully well, we don't have to worry about that my entire worldview is gone <laughs> um, so let's let's switch it up and talk about confronting a bigfoot with prep time i feel like there is one right answer here and i know that it's one that you caleb treasure very dearly are we ta- are we are we thinking the same thing? Grab grab your shovels. Oh ladies my and goodness, we're digging holes. We're baby. digging holes. We're God. digging holes because if you are big and you are walking and then suddenly you are Not. knee deep knee deep in a pit of spikes that are covered in feces and all other kind of fun stuff, this and is now you're gonna get sepsis in your leg. Either referred to as a tiger pit or a wolf hole. Yep, yeah. tiger pits and wolf holes. You put a bunch of spikes. Down at the bottom, you dig a big pit, dig a big hole, like eight feet deep, right? And at the bottom, you put a bunch of sharpened sticks, right? And on those sharpened sticks, you, you, you drop a deuce, you rub them in that to cause sepsis, blood poisoning, things of that nature. Mm-hmm. You stick those in there, and then you build a lattice out of... a. a sticks and then you cover that lattice with whatever the the ground coverage is yeah. leaves uh, pine needles dirt 
something. Put your needles over your leaves because they'll just fall through. Exactly. Unless you get real long pine needles. Depends. What I, what are the, whatever the heck you're doing. Just cover it up so that they can't see it, right? Now, again, the the ability to build a trap is one thing, but the ability to utilize the trap requires a um, knowledge of how the Bigfoot is going to walk we're or assuming, how the animals Yeah, we're walk. assuming that he... You hit his car, you left a note, but not a phone number. Right. And... He saw he's, you running off. He saw you running off, right. and he's just mad. He's oh, he's so coming after you. He's just you gonna know. run straight at you. Yep. That yep. makes things so much easier. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, that does... you just stand on the other side of the pit, mm. and then he does a spitting back kick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to imagine that. I don't need that in my life. What a what what nightmarish fighting game are you imagining here? Where back, Bigfoot does a spitting back kick? I want. This I don't care how long it takes, but I want to see a Bigfoot doing a spinning. What? Back what kick. in the horrific Jack's Link ad? Mm. <laughs> I like I like the Jack's Link. They're they're great. The Jack Bigfoot. Link's big beef jerky ads. Jack Link's beef messing jerky. messing with Sasquatch. messing with Sasquatch. That's me. The I like one the one where he plays a guitar. That's my favorite. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, when you stand on the other side of the pit, Bigfoot's like, hey, it's that guy. Unless he, you know, picks up a rock, in which mm. case, uh, well, yeah. hope there's a tree nearby, you know, or throw things back at him, <laughs> rile him up to come at you. It's like, come on, bro, what's up, bro? Mm. And then he runs and he, you know, steps in the pit and he Looney Tune falls, but does not Looney Tune, you know, stab into the spikes because mm. they don't tend to show that on Looney Tunes. Thank, yeah, thank God. That's my but... childhood would have been a lot worse. <laughs> Maybe a lot better. Maybe, depends, I don't know. Depends my, on how you define it. My childhood was a nightmare half the time, so, like, yeah, that that, that might have been a little much for me, mm. for little little Caleb. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I would, digging a hole is, like, one of the best ways to deal with things. Um, you know, and, and then, you know, while you're sitting at the top, you just throw things at him. Yeah, I, you know? I expect he'd be able to climb. Yeah. Unfortunately. I mean, yeah. If he's, is he going to be able to climb once he has a whole bunch of sharpened stakes through his legs? Hopefully not. Hopefully not. In I mean, case, it, is he climbing with all legs? I, I don't know. Maybe. Is, maybe. Can he lift himself up with his arms? He's kind of big. He's pretty big, but... Almost, you just throw a, a really big rock I'm, on I'm his picturing, head. and of course entirely speculative, but human proportions, but proportional chimp strength. So like one point, what's a chimp? One point three times stronger than a human, and the chimp, a chimp weighs like a hundred pounds, hundred forty pounds, maybe two hundred pounds, a real big one. Imagine a four hundred to five hundred pound. Is that I just am, a gorilla? Yeah, that is just a gorilla. Uh, so just gorilla strength. Gorilla strength. Gotcha. I don't. Uh, again, we're bringing it back to the beginning. I would not fight. A silverback gorilla. I wouldn't In fact, fight a bonobo, man. You couldn't. <laughs> yeah, uh, chimps, bonobos. I would like to hold hands with an orangutan. Yeah, I think they're chill. You think they definitely seem the most chill out of the group? And then on well, the opposite spectrum, baboons. Baboons. Well, baboons aren't great apes. No, but they're old they're, world. They're, they're monkey. Old but, world monkey. But at the same time, when I think. When I think aggressive primate, I think baboons. Mm. I do not like baboons. I've never liked baboons. They are the rats of the primate family, and damn, they are pretty efficient predators for something that shouldn't be a predator. Yeah, I mean, look, I watched a baboon eat a baby gazelle, or is either yeah, antelope gazelle, or gazelle, antelope gazelle, interchange while it was still alive from the ass first, and ever since then, you know, it's it definitely solidified my my. Disgust, or not disgust, but aversion to. I don't like. I don't like apes. I don't like monkey. I'll be honest. I'll say it. I do not like primates. Mm. They make me uncomfortable. <laughs> it's highlighting the the nastiest aspects of humanity. Probably. Yeah. That's probably the reason why. Yeah. Jeez. Okay. So we've hit an hour. We've hit an hour. We've hit we an hour. have hit Oh jeez, that was quick. Yeah. That was nutty. Do we have anything else that we want to talk about? Um, closing statements, I guess. I um, mean, to be clear, 
I guess despite my my infatuation, I have my doubts about Bigfoot being out in the out in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. I would love for him to be. It's cool. I like cryptids. I like cryptozoology as long as people don't take it too far or hurt anyone or do anything stupid. Or take it too seriously. Yeah, take at, the it end too the day, seriously. at the end of the day, we're like, ah, yes, secret animals. But there's something special about going, oh, yeah, there's there's dinosaurs out in the, what, Congo? Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, all the, like, Mukele Mbembe and... Uh, yeah. See, you bring up dinosaurs, this guy knows... Everything I there know, is. I know too many of them. Far too many dinosaurs. Um, mm. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Like, this is fun. This is. Fun. It's at the end of the day, it's fun. It's once, fun. once you. Well, I was about to say once you make a job out of it, but we're making podcasts. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the hope. <laughs> that's and the dream. hope and dream. I'm not going to become a hypocrite seen, on that regard. Yeah, we've seen a lot of people popping off in the in the cryptid space on podcasts lately. Yeah, we might know, we're th- we're taking our stab at we it. We might as well throw our hat in the ring. Why yeah, not? Yeah. I dude, this is awesome. I'm mm-hmm. this is way better than what I thought it was going to be. Um so, in conclusion, Bigfoot is the big hairy guy. He but might, he might be a Neanderthal. He might be a Neanderthal, a offshoot of Neanderthal, ancient. Well, I'm not going to say ancient humans, but but evolved because of being out competed by humans, and instead of dying off eventually or being, I suppose, bred out of existence, mm. they uh, they evolved a different way. And you know, I'm sure that the theory there there's a lot of ways that a species can go. It's not like once a species evolves in one direction, all of the older ones just die right. or go. So there's still I mean that one still wait for gets died off. people who are descended from Neanderthals potentially or anything along those lines. But Again, you know, we kind of avoided the question, but does that mean that <laughs> <laughs> humans are, are compatible biologically with with Bigfoot. You know, I I would have to say maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I'm not gonna encourage viewers to go and find out for themselves because that's a uh, that's really do not try this at home. Bigfoot ate my ass outside of Denny's. Oh god. <laughs> All you got with this stupid shirt. All I got was this t shirt. Mm. <laughs> well, uh, there, there, there you is. have it. On this, that note, this is Snickersnack. This is Snickersnack. And he's he's been Caleb. And, uh, no, he's been Cal. That's right. One, two, one, two, through and through the Vorpal Blade with Snickersnack. Lewis Carroll. Lewis Carroll. He left it dead with its head. We went galumphing back. Good. On that note, yeah, I think that's a good place to... Cue outro music.